Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to look at the structure of DNA. So DNA consists of two anti-parallel strands. Anything here that's underlined and in bold is taken directly from the mark scheme and you really need to know what this is. Now anti-parallel basically means that it's strands that run in opposite directions. So as you can see in this diagram here, my phosphate here is attached to my five prime end, so my carbon five. Whereas at this end, this is my carbon three. So this is the, the five prime end and this is the three prime end. Whereas in this polynucleotide strand here, this is my three prime end. So this is carbon three over here and this is carbon five over here. So that's my three to five prime. So they're running in opposite directions. Now, if you remember from a previous video, these nucleotides that form the sugar phosphate backbone here, are held together by a 3 to 5 phosphodiester bond. Now the 3 to 5 phosphodiester bond forms that sugar phosphate backbone, but in order to join these two polynucleotide strands together in the antiparallel structure, we need hydrogen bonds to form between the bases. So between a thymine and an adenine, I'll have two hydrogen bonds, and between a cytosine and a guanine, I'll have three hydrogen bonds. Now you'll also note here that a purine always binds to a pyrimidine. So the purines here are our bases A and G, and they will always bind to pyrimidines, which are T and C. Now, the hydrogen bonds are actually fairly weak. So it means that they're quite easily breakable in order to either carry out transcription or DNA replication, which does occur within the nucleus. Here in this image, we can see here that the two anti-parallel nuclear polynucleotides or strands of dna twist around each other to form a double helix and that it's the complementary base pairs in the middle so the a to t are complementary the g and c are complementary to each other in shape and uh, these it's these complementary base pairs that are holding these two polynucleotides together here um and we'll have the wherever i've got t i'll always have a so this will mean for example if i have 33 percent of um T bases, I will also have 33% of A bases. Here is another example of that 3 to 5 prime end. So you can see here it's a 3 prime to 5 prime, whereas this one is a 3 prime to a 5 prime. So that it shows just another image to show you there that the anti-parallel strands. And that's about all you need to know there on the structure of DNA. If you like the videos, hit subscribe. And guys, good luck in your exams.